October 27th, Thunder. It was reported that Benjamin Franklin, colonist and failed printer, has discovered electricity. Oh, good. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's electricity? <laughs> it is a force of nature, sir. And if ever harnessed by man, it could be of great benefit. It could drive great engines, illuminate our streets, turning night into day, and propel great ships over the oceans of the world. I see a time... Oh, oh God, he's off again. <laughs> I see a time when our homes will be warmed and our water heated by this same power, and there will be hot baths for everyone. Well, that won't suit you, you verminous rogue. <laughs> Allow me to continue with my diary. October the 28th, Mist, Wild Will Haggard, finally took the plunge, hurled himself from the highest window of the dandy club. Died instantly. <laughs> what? Uncle Will dead? But why? Well, because he made a three-foot hole in the middle of the road, Robin. That's why. <laughs> I knew what made him do it. Well, because he'd lost 10,000 guineas at PK. That's never worried him before. Strange. Do you realise that he's the fifth haggard to die in the last six months? What? And all under singular circumstances. Consult your diary. Well, look. Uh, May the 15th, Lucius Haggard, the brewer, discovered drowning in one of his own vats, fought off his rescuers and died. <laughs> and then June, Tarquin Haggard, the sportsman, accidentally shot himself twice whilst crossing a stile. Will these accidents happen, Roderick? Not twice, Father. we have had to reload. <laughs> and then Pierpoint Haggard, killed by a poison mushroom so virulent that his face turned black and even the leeches died. Well, that was his own fault. He never could remember that the spotted ones were toadstools. All right, what about St. John? Haggard, eaten by wolves whilst touring the Lake District. I mean, is it likely? Mm. Strangest things have happened. My cousin was killed by a sheep. <laughs> no one's ever been killed by a sheep, John. He was. It fell on him from a window. <laughs> fell on him from a window? My cousin was very fond of it. Used to keep it in the house as a pet. Oh, that's a sad story, Grant. You know, the, there is a happy postscript, sir. The sheep lived and inherited the estate. <laughs> Nonsense, Grant. Just one moment, Roderick. Inherited the estate? That's given me a thought. Quick, the family tree. Ah. Now, Lucius Tarquin, Pierpoint, St. John, Will Haggard, just as I thought. I am now the heir to the estate of old Silas Haggard, and on the death of his brother Pelham, I inherit the lot. But I thought Uncle Pelham held the estate in trust for Harold, Uncle Silas's son. No, no, he was last on an expedition. He had the misfortune to be eaten by the Sandwich Islanders. <laughs> All that was left of him were two shirt buttons, oh. and then the estate passed to Uncle Pelham. Pack the bags, Branch. Where are we going, Father? We travel to Lincolnshire, to the moated Grange. I intend to visit Uncle Pelham and view my inheritance. It's not your inheritance yet. Ah, but Uncle Pelham is a creaking gate. Yes, but they say a creaking gate swings forever on its hinges, Father. Not if you give it a bit of a shove, Roderick. <laughs> Come, Branch. What are you looking at? Just wondering if I'm in here at all, sir. <laughs> you, Branch, in the family tree, but you're a menial. I know, but uh, the old squire was very liberal with his favours, and my mother was a prepossessing woman, and they do say that there is a resemblance between me and your late father. You mean you're a bastard, Grant? <laughs> I've never doubted it. <laughs> yeah, and if your father had made my mother an honest woman, I'd be sleeping in silken sheets instead of kipping in the stable. Stop grumbling, Grant! Well, I've had enough of <laughs> And how is my uncle? Oh, the news is not good, Squire. Is he, is he dead? No, but he overtaxes himself and I fear the worst. Well, we can't live forever, can we? <laughs> Roderick, begin the inventory. Hmm. One moment, what's happened to the walnut cabinet and the oak dresser? So, What? You've stolen them, you damned rogue! Taking advantage of an old dotard in his last few hours? That was my inheritance, you dog! Oh, I assure you! <laughs> They were not in the infantry. How would you know, you, you festering saw? <laughs> I am a lawyer. <laughs> a lawyer. Watch your pockets, Roderick. 
All lawyers are thieving, illegitimate sons of whores. And I can see by your face you have bad blood in you. So what's your name, Mr. Lawyer, if you have one? Haggard. <laughs> what? You, Raya Haggard. I don't believe it. A distant cousin, not from your exalted branch. I've known our times and was raised from poverty by our dear uncle who took me into his service to advise him on legal matters. And as a lawyer, I advise you that you have subjected me to slander, defamation of character and physical assault, all in front of witnesses and actionable at law. What witnesses? Well, I saw nothing. I did. Shut up, Brian. <laughs> uh, look, since we are cousins, Uriah, I don't see any reason for us to quarrel. Continue with the inventory, rather. The Italian tapestry, Father. The rape of the Sabine women. It's disappeared. What? That was almost a firm favourite of mine. Where is it? Uh, I moved it to another room, lest it overexcite our uncle. <laughs> oh, he's that sick, is he? Well, there's nothing wrong with a little excitement. A short life, but a merry one. Oh, on the contrary. I feel it my sacred duty to prolong our dear uncle's life for as long as possible. Yes, uh, huh? your feelings do you credit, you right. Oh, I do my best. Mm. I'll fetch him to you and you'll see what I... Well, we'd better make ourselves comfortable. We could be in for a long wait. It takes poor Uncle Pelham several hours to dress. What's wrong with him, sir? Oh, the palsy, the dropsy, St Agnes's twitch, the rising of the gorge, <laughs> and the raging fevers. His heart's not that good, either. <laughs> Amos! <laughs> Amos! I'm sorry, sir, I don't think we've had the pleasure. But I'm your Uncle Pelham! What? Then my eyes deceive me. I, I must consult this miniature that I wear forever on my person, close to my heart. Oh, it is he. But what's happened, Uncle? The last time I saw you, you were being carried by two footmen. I found it was all in the mind. You're as young as you feel, Amos. <laughs> Indeed. Are you not pleased? <laughs> Delighted. But you must take care, Uncle. Oh, no, I'm fine. Except for my art that misses the occasional beat. Ah, you see, so the doctors have warned you about sudden shocks. When I referred to my art, I meant that I'd lost it. Lost, lost it? Excuse me one moment. Well, he can't have lost it. That's impossible. Probably means he can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> Too weak, eh? Sudden shocks. What if somebody dropped a vase behind him? No, I don't know, Father. He looks all right to me. I thought you said he was a creaking git. Well, he was. Then someone's been oiling his hinges. <laughs> Do you remember Bathsheba, Amos? Bathsheba? Young Harold's betrothed, so tragically bereaved when he was taken and eaten by the Sandwich Islanders. Oh! <laughs> she was left almost penniless and her father deeply in debt. I looked to their welfare and became a second father to Bathsheba. <laughs> but the sap rises even in the oldest oak. And now she has consented to make me the happiest of men. Oh, and when is the great day? Tomorrow. Oh. But is that wise? Have you consulted a doctor? Doesn't this come under the heading of undue excitement? What? You, 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 you must uh, forgive my son, Roderick. He's concerned for your welfare. Roderick? But that voice, that face, that bearing, Oh, for one moment, I thought my golden boy had returned. I see him every night in my dreams. I hear his voice, but when I awake, he's gone. And all I have are two shirt buttons. <laughs> uh, yes, well, you'll, you'll get over it. <laughs> oh, Bathsheba, let us take a turn in the garden. We'll meet at dinner, gentlemen. Uriah will show you to your quarters. <laughs> Bathsheba. Look at that silly old fool. Little does he realise that in a few hours he'll be dead. He looks rather <laughs> sprightly to me, Father. Yeah, as old as you feel. Now we know what he's been feeling. <laughs> Shut up, Grunge. <laughs> no, Grunge is right. If that tasty morsel doesn't come under the heading of a sudden shock, well, then my backside's a hot cross bun. But he'll leave a wife, Father. No, 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 the estate cannot be passed to the female line. No, she'll do our work for us. And it won't be the first time that a haggard has died from a surfeit of ecstasy. <laughs> Suppose there's a son. That age. Well, I really did say the sap was rising, sir. But he's an old man. He's got one foot in the grave. Even so, you can get a bad sting from a dying bee, father. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We must ensure that the wedding never takes place. What about an unfrocked priest? No, no. That dog of a lawyer would see through it. No, we'll hold a stag party for Uncle Pelham. A stag party that you'll never forget. And we'll dance the Haggard Reel. The Haggard Reel? 
<laughs> with the bouncing and the jostling. And the kicking and the shoving. The same. But no man his age could survive the haggard reel. Precisely. <laughs> A brilliant stratagem, Father. Then come, let us retire to rest. For if we are to dance the haggard reel, we'll need all our strength. <laughs> <laughs> is yet young, Uncle. Yeah, but it's my wedding day tomorrow. Then more wine. Oh, let me get my breath. Yes, have pity, Father. Can't you see Uncle Pelham's exhausted? Dancing is hot work for the older man. You should have played whist. What? You young puppy. <laughs> exhausted? I could dance you all under the table. Really? Then should we make it the haggard reel this time? Just, just for fun. Aye, the haggard reel. <laughs> haggard reel? <laughs> so be it. And tell the blind fiddler to play faster, Roderick. This is not a funeral yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, play faster, oh, Aren't you going to join in the fun, Uriah? No, I thought I'd prefer to watch, and you can... No, I shall beat the time. A grunge will take my place. Uh -huh. Have you got your steel toe caps on, grunge? <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Then uh, play blind fiddler. One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bathsheba's room. It is. Ah, the night before the nuptials. What dreams, what tremendous expectations, what girlish fears. What a shock she's gonna get. <laughs> ah, to be raised for 25 summers to this delicate perfection, and then to be served up like lamb and lettuce to that old goat. <laughs> then go to her, Roderick. Steal her from under the old dotard's nose and make her your own. But she mourns for Harold. She's cuckoo, Roderick. <laughs> Knock on the door and say it's Harold come for his shirt buttons. <laughs> she mistook her once before. What could happen again? Go on. Ooh, ooh. It is Harold. She won't come. <laughs> <laughs> be dead. <laughs> Nobody could withstand that fall, not even the coarsest, most insensitive of brutes. Uh, uh... <laughs> I'm wrong, he lives. I'll summon help. Master! Now, Grant, before you say anything, I'd like to point out that this accident did not occur at your normal place of employment, so there can... <laughs> there can be no question of any compensation. 
Besides, you shouldn't have been so infernally clumsy. I tripped. But what, what's this round your legs? Silken thread stretched across the stair, meant for you. You mean this could have been me? Well, thank God it's only you, Grant. <laughs> it looks very painful. It is, sir. But who would want to trip me down the stairs? It's ridiculous. May I speak, sir? No, you may not, Grant. <laughs> well, on the other hand, these may be your last words. <laughs> Try to make them interesting, Grant. <laughs> First the urn, then the blind fiddler, now this pocket. Pocket? <laughs> oh! Pocket. <laughs> oh, but this is the family tree. What are you doing with this, Grant? Trying to slip your name in again? No, <laughs> sir. No, sir. Murder. Uh. Murder. Uh. <laughs> the murderer. The man who inherits after you. You dozy. Dozy. <laughs> Bugger. <laughs> That's enough, Grant. No need for temper. Uh, what, what does this mean? Silas, Harold, Pelham, Amos, Roderick, Uriah... Uriah Hackett! The same, sir. Oh. Stay where you are. These pistols are loaded. Would you assist your servant to his feet? Why? I want to show you the cellars. I've got a bad leg. <laughs> Move. Wait a minute. You're not Harold. How do you know? <laughs> Harold could really kiss. <laughs> and he was taller and more handsome. Oh. Why did you say you were Harold? Uh, slip of the tongue. I meant Roderick. And he was more intelligent. <laughs> As if you could have been my darling Harold. Well, of course I couldn't have been Harold. Harold's dead. He's been sandwiched. Don't say that! <laughs> These are all they brought back. All I have left of him. Two shirt buttons. Oh, what am I to do, Roderick? I suppose you could have them made up into earrings. I heard his voice last night, Roderick. What did he say? He cried out, don't beat me. You sure it wasn't don't eat me? It's very similar. No. Last night, my steps took me to the door of the cellar. I heard raised voices within, but my poor woman's fingers could not draw back the bolts. I must have fainted. When I awoke, I was here in my chamber. It was a dream, Bathsheba. Oh, and if I was dreaming, how did I come by this? <laughs> what is it? It's the key to the cellar. Oh. I want you to go down there and find out what's behind that door. Me? They say you're the dancing blade, do they not? Well, yes, but... I hate cellars. <laughs> there aren't any rats, are there? Do this for me, and I shall be forever grateful. Mm, oh. <laughs> My blade is at your service, ma'am. <laughs> oh, damn. What's the matter, sir? Well, I want to scratch my nose. <laughs> You're lucky that's all you want to scratch. <laughs> Be of good heart, Uncle. You'll get used to it. The first six months are the worst. You've been here for six months, Harold. More. I came back from my last voyage only to be thrown into this dungeon and whipped like a cur. But we thought you'd been eaten, Harold. Better I had. Oh, I've got used to this hanging about. <laughs> it's the beatings and the lashings and the thumbscrew I can't stand. Oh, God. But why are they doing this to you? My uncle Pelham wishes me to sign a document renouncing all claims to the estate. Only then will he feel safe. Well, why don't they just kill you instead? I'm his brother's son. He would not shed my blood. <laughs> I come to you for the last time. Sign this paper and renounce your claim, and you'll leave here a free man and sail for Calais on tomorrow's tide. Never. I will not sign. I'd rather die first. Well said. Good for you. Silence! There is an alternative. Oh. What alternative? Yeah, what alternative? You could leave another way. Remember the old trapdoor, Harold? First a 50-foot drop, and then 
the cesspit. If the fall doesn't break your neck or the, the rats get you or the slime, then you'll drown in the moat, all of you. What did he say? <laughs> 50, 50 foot drop into a cesspit, all of us. Sign the paper! Sign the paper! <laughs> Silence! Very well. Not for myself, but to save the others. I will sign that wretched pig. Oh, thank God for that. Release him so that he may sign. No, no, wait a minute. Don't sign. Shut up, Dan. Don't you see, sir? We're all in danger, including your Uncle Pelham. What? First he murdered Lucius, then Tarquin, then Pierpoint. He intends to murder all who stand in his way. Is this true, Uriah? No, of course it isn't. Don't you see? They wish to divide us. Now let's shoot him into the shite and be done with it. <laughs> You're forgetting my son, Roderick. I am intelligent, quick, and resourceful. Oh. The dancing blade of the haggers will soon cut through this intrigue. In subtlety and guile, he has no equal. I think that's him now. Pelham, cover them with ease. If anybody makes the slightest sound, shoot to kill. <laughs> Silence! Ah, oh, Roderick, can I help you? Just looking around, Uriah. <laughs> Interesting cellar. Yes, we like it. <laughs> What's that? Hmm? Oh, that. Oh, it's a torture instrument brought back from Spain by your late Uncle Silas. How does it work? Well, you um, stand the victim inside opposite these spikes and then you close it and it squeezes the taxes out of them. We call it the Iron Lady. <laughs> An Iron Lady indeed. A deadly embrace, Uriah. Yes, rather small though, isn't it? I doubt whether it would take a man of your size. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. In here. That's right. Yes. <laughs> ah, plenty of room. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Quick death. Not clean, but quick. <gasps> Harold, my darling! Oh! You are saved! Yes! Oh. And thanks to our brave cousin here. Roderick, our hero! That was nothing. Uncle Pelham, throw down your pistols. Oh. Harold, can you ever forgive me? You, you rogue! No, Harold, forgive him. He's an old man and there's not enough kindness in the world. Then, for the sake of this good and valiant man, I forgive you. Oh, joy! He is an example to us all! We shall name our first son after him! The Dancing Blade, indeed! Oh. I stood no chance against such an adversary! Then come, let us leave this scene of such sorry events and make merry! Thank you.